my my full name, my maiden name is Hannah Fire, and my married name is Hannah Franklin. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born in Poland mm -hmm. in 1937. And when I was two years old, we escaped from Poland, my father and mother, with um, two brothers and I. And, um, and my first memory is being in a railway station and um, I was wearing a little red coat apparently like Schindler's List and the little girls wandering around when I saw the movie I thought that was probably me and um, what happened was that at night my mother covered me with my little red coat in the railway station on a bench and someone stole the little coat off my back. And that was my first memory. And from then on, there were little things in the railway station. I got lost and on the, uh, and there was loud uh, descriptions of me, apparently. My brothers teased me because they were a little older than I. And so I remember that, the teasing. And, uh, and that was, that's, I remember, that's all I remember for that point and then apparently we went to Tashkent and uh, Tashkent where is this? Tashkent in I guess it's was it Uzbekistan or Tajikistan I don't even know <laughs> and um, well I, I'm, I'm a little bit vague of my of the history but um, apparently we we did have I did have two little I had another little brother a uh, baby and then uh, and then another baby and both of them uh, did not survive they they died and um, I do remember my mother holding the baby the, her, the, the last baby in her arms and crying so so these moments like that I remember then we were in a we my my older brother and I got sick. We had um, typhoid or something like that and landed in the hospital. And um, my brother almost died and my mother, I, I, I remember seeing her breathing into him because she just could not bear that she would lose another child. So she breathed, she lay on top of the child and breathed, my brother and breathed and he, he, um, he came, he, he recovered. Um, so then I remember being, uh, my father apparently was sent to, uh, into the army. And uh, because he, I think he had a hardware store or something like that in Europe, in, in Poland. He was, uh, I don't know, he, he, he fixed things so he did not do any combat. And my mother was left on her own with us, and of course she couldn't cope. So we were sent to uh, home. My brothers, and I don't remember seeing my brothers at all, except for some reason. And this home were children. And I think we were all in, it seemed to me, a whole bunch of little girls in one bed. I don't know. And then we, I just wandered around, and I don't know what I did. <laughs> Um, I know there was apparently they had a horse and the horse broke its leg and therefore we had hamburger. Anyway, I really don't remember very much because I was very just small and then I guess one day they, the war must have been over and we were all, um, my parents uh, I guess went on their own back to Poland. And uh, and we were on a train. We were put on a train to go back. The children, all the children. We had this woman that took care of us, you know, that was our chaperone. And it, and it took forever. I'm sure it took a few weeks to get back. And meantime, I don't know, she, I, she and the conductor seemed to have hit it off because they built themselves a little hut 
in the train. And everybody was giggling, but I wasn't quite sure why. And, uh, but I remember the, uh, I, I remember the, the train and going over bridges and out of railway stations and um, through forests and various things like that. And then, so that was, and then we came, we came to, we came to back to Poland. What the heck was the town's name? Uh, so when we came, anyway, we learned that I, apparently there was nobody left. All the, everybody had been killed. All the family, the rest of the family. And so my mother was very distraught because she didn't have anybody left. My father had a sister in Canada and a brother who had gone to Israel earlier in the 1917 or as a young man. So he had somebody, but my mother had no one. And uh, she was really distraught about it. And, uh, and then we came to Halifax. And, and then we came to Montreal. And all through, and the other thing, all through the journey, my mother had these um, had these eider downs from Poland, and she apparently dragged them all the way to into Russia and all these places, and she came back with them to Canada, and she came back to them to Montreal. And when I got married. I got married very young. She made pillows for me from those eider downs. And then I threw, you know, so finally they turned to dust. And uh, I think I wrote a little story or a poem. I have, I wrote poetry on that, you know, on some of these things that I remember. Is that right? You have to tell me as much as you remember and the things that uh, are relevant for you. Well, what's relevant for me now is uh, I realize that uh, a lot of my art probably comes from my childhood mm. because, um, as someone said, a child sees with its skin. You know, so I, my skin absorbed a lot. And a lot of my, uh, my artwork is connected to that. And the new, the new, as I, as I started to tell you, the new, my new series on the desert. Um, it started when I went to visit, went to Israel and walked in the Sinai and the Negev and, and seeing traces. You know, there's like, there's a place called uh, Timna Park where they say King Solomon's copper mines are there. And you see on the rocks their little drawings of deer, and you know, the little antelope, then there's little writing on the walls in Hebrew, like scratched in something on the, fossilized in the sand, a footprint, and I took all, my brother went with me and, and I photographed, I took photographs of his finger pointing to certain things and his foot is in the footprint and uh, it's, uh, and, a return, and um, and then I ha so I have these large canvases that are uh, sand, they're just with traces, you know, big uh, big landscapes of sand and rock, and traces of of perhaps uh, buildings, ruins, stones, broken columns, all. And, and it's part of, part of our history, part of the Jewish journey. Well, uh, the thing is, um, how much do you think, uh, as you say, some people talk about it, some people have even a uh, conflict with uh, their memories and they sometimes block things they yeah. don't want to remember. I mean, did you have any things like that because I mean you were you say about 10 when you come here yeah 
um, you think there is something you don't want or you have blocked and maybe you other time comes and things over you know that um, when you were young maybe you were not so aware and reflecting of them now you, you, you actually I, I don't remember anything like that I just remember walking around by myself all the time I remember going I, somehow I found myself in an audience somewhere in Tajikistan or wherever there was a stage and gypsies dancing I must have been three or four I don't know how I got there I don't remember anybody weaving with me there must have been and, and I can still see them, their bodies writhing in the tambourines. So I wrote little poems, and was, that's where I, you know, my dan my desire for dance was born there. Gypsies, dance, I still see them. So um, no, I, I don't know. I just uh, seems to me I always wandered around by myself. And your religion about talking about your own one uh, has think do you think has been always the same or do you have an evolution since uh, for instance you've been experiencing I think yoga oh um, <laughs> <laughs> meditate yes but they the Hasidim they meditate too they believe in meditation like the Kabbalah they talk about meditation mm. Well, I'm asking because, you know, some people, for instance, uh, all of the survivors, they have a very different, sometimes, can, well, I mean, of course, that influence oh, yeah. in their beliefs, because yeah. can you imagine experiencing that even, yeah. you know, if you... No, I never, I never, I never, um, I never thought of that. You know, when I was living with my parents, you know, I, I we had Sabbath. As I say, I was very often not, and I wasn't home very much, mm -hmm. and they were not very strict like some I could do what I wanted but, um, no it it, it, it I, I never bothered me mm -hmm. well that's yeah. it yes you want to see it are you gonna show it yes you can come here it's uh, done uh, yeah leave the microphone there no what no no the microphone is alright because it's still on record and you can tell me <laughs> you can scream if you want. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's very good. <laughs> Except Wait, for something. It's, not, it's, it's in it's the not... middle of the camera. Come here. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's oh fine. my god. <laughs> it's not that flattering. <laughs> it's the nose or something. The nose is not. Do hmm? mm, you think? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good painting, but I don't want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no. no it's, a, it's, it's too dark on top. In the top? Yeah. What do you mean the top? It's dark here, so it gets the... Uh... No. It looks like me, and yet it doesn't. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a good painting. All right, it's a good painting. That's all I can say. Boy, a ver, this película. Magnifico! Hey, you you hungry? Yeah, I don't know. Hanna, yeah. okay. I think he has. Let's see, he has it's different opinions. Hey. Come here, yes. Uh, what? Do you, do you feel that you can have us or do you want to be at house? Hannah doesn't wow. like the painting. Sorry? Hannah doesn't like the painting. I think it's good. That's her. What's the matter? That's good. You don't like well, one artist. You have one artist, so. another artist. Yeah, you have my okay, with your glasses, yeah. yeah it's good. Right. Come on. It's a good painting. Fantastic. Okay. Take some time. Don't take it personally. No, it's good. It's the eyes. I don't like the eyes. I mean, it's a good painting. It's great. Pain. I shouldn't smiling. 
maybe, to be more serious. Okay. No, it's great.